Looking for fun places to tour in Hong Kong? We got some locals for you today. Global from Asia, number 87. Welcome to the Global from Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business from Hong Kong is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Nicolini. Hope everybody's having an incredible day. I'm all Zen after doing some meditation. It's getting really hot and humid summertime here. And so the mosquitoes are out in full force and they can sense my sweaty self and they come in droves. It's been pretty hard focusing on meditation when you're being eaten alive. But luckily my wonderful wife bought me a pop-up mosquito net that uh like a tent so that when I'm out in the garden I can sit under this bad boy. So yeah, like always when there is a will, there's a way, right? So this week, let's move on. <laughs> this week we got a five star review. I'm so happy to get one that it's, uh, I'm going to read off right off first. It's been over a month since I've gotten a review, so this has really motivated me a ton. I really appreciate feedbacks, and uh, I'm going to read it off. So it's from a name I cannot pronounce, O-I-J-F-O-E-R-F-E-O-R. Maybe it's a fake name. <laughs> uh, location in the United States, May 27th this year, five stars, titled... Outstanding content about Asia, and he says, or she says, I've been listening to Mike's podcast for a while now, and he posts absolutely incredible content, which I haven't been able to find anywhere else. He interviews real-world experts, people with on-the-ground experiences, and shares a huge amount of knowledge very openly. This podcast is a major asset to the community. Thank you, Oi. I'll just call you Oi. Thanks a lot, uh, and I, pre- I hope this review stays up on iTunes. Uh, it's appreciated and uh, glad you're enjoying the show and hope you'll enjoy today's. We have a team here where I'm a volunteer mentor at the Founder Institute in Hong Kong. And this team is uh, really stood out. They really have a product going well and moving forward. It's two amazing female entrepreneurs, Maggie and Anita, who have a startup where it connects uh, visitors that aren't familiar with you know Hong Kong, starting in Hong Kong, and when they're coming here on business or you know on leisure, they can find some locals to find out where to go. So I've been waiting to do a show for a while where we talk about kind of touristy stuff and travel stuff in Hong Kong. I know we're a business podcast, but I know even business people need to see the sights and uh, be a tourist one day, maybe on their travels. So we got them on the show to share about some of the hot spots to tour and visit and eat at in Hong Kong when you're here. Maybe you're here for your company set up, banking or audits or whatever. So hopefully this show is a resource for you and gives you some ideas of not the standard, you know, bars in Long Kwai Fong or other things. There's there's lots of stuff to do. And also we put a ton of the show notes with the links and the places and the names on globalfromasia.com slash episode 87. So check that out and let's get started. Okay, thank you everybody for tuning in to another Global From Asia podcast. We have two entrepreneur women on the call with us. Thanks for being here, Maggie and Anita from Sam the Local. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> oh, great, great. You have- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. So, yeah, I mean, we met through the, you're in the Founder Institute in Hong Kong chapter uh, currently, and I think you're doing a great job so far. And so I've, you know, I've been met you that way. So maybe you can just give us a little bit of a high level introduction of yourselves and your business. Okay. Well, Sam the Local is a P2P platform that connects people to locals for customized outings. So, for example, if you come into Hong Kong and you're really into the outdoors, you can come onto the platform, look for a guy who specializes in hiking, and he'll take you to go see the hidden waterfalls or the infinity pools out out in Lantau Island. And, um, you know, what we're hoping to do is to enable everybody to experience the world with a human touch. Awesome. That's great. And then, Um, go ahead. A little bit about me. Yeah, we like Uh, to know about you you girls, so I'm curious too. (laughs) I'm Maggie, and um, my roots are in California. That's where I was born and raised. And then I moved to Hong Kong at the end of 2011 for a job with a British media company. 
for them, I was doing graphic design and uh, event marketing. And I was there for about three years. And then about two years in, I started working on Sam the Local. And uh, just at the end of the January this year, I was like, all right, I think I think it's time. I got to go pursue my own dream, pursue my own um, entrepreneurial life. And so I quit the full-time job and I've been working on Sam the Local uh, full-time since then. Great, great. And Anita? And I'm Anita. I moved from California to Hong Kong three and a half years ago. I relocated with my previous job um, doing project management, internal communications, um, and have and since then have worked in a couple of digital marketing alignment and campaigns. Since moving to Hong Kong, I've traveled around Asia and also spent a significant amount of time exploring Hong Kong, and the city still continues to surprise me. And that's one of the reasons why um, I started working on Sam the Local Awesome. And so, to, um, so how we met. Yeah, yeah, go, let's go. Yeah, go ahead. We actually met through a mutual friend. The funny thing is we actually had met in California. We just don't really know or remember it. So um, we're part of the student club that, you know, exists on both of our campuses. So we went to separate universities and um, I happened to be going to an event that her campus was hosting. And I actually sat right next to her at this event and we have a picture together, but we don't really remember meeting each other. So one day we were in Hong Kong and we happened to be looking back at pictures and we saw this one picture where we were sitting next to each other. We're like, oh my God, we actually knew each other prior to Hong Kong. Um, so it was just kind of like a really small world. That's really, that's really, really funny. So you get so two Cali girls in Hong Kong that met randomly or don't remember meeting in California before. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, like uh, I'm really happy you're, you're pursuing your dreams and doing it in Hong Kong too. I think a lot of people would agree. We, we, we love entrepreneurs in, in Hong Kong and Asia. So well, I'm really happy to have you on the show. So I, you know, I was prepping you for the show before we started a recording and I think that I've been excited to get you on because I've been kind of waiting for a, a episode where we talk about like tourist things to do in Hong Kong and, you know, a little bit fun stuff, not just talking bank accounts and, uh, you know, trading import exports. So you know, <laughs> uh, maybe, do you, you know, how is tourism in Hong Kong? Like what, what, what is like kind of like the overview of, of, uh, of the market? Tourism is really big in Hong Kong. So in 2014, there were 60.8 million visitors to Hong Kong, which was a 12% increase from 2013. Um, almost half, 46% of them actually stay overnight. The other half come from the uh, single trippers from mainland. Um, so that's, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's uh, a whole. <laughs> <laughs> the overnighters, um, a large portion of them are American. And of the Americans, about 41% of them come for vacation and 35 of them come for business. So um, they're a really big chunk of our target market. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I think I've, I personally always, I guess I always mix business and pleasure maybe, but uh, usually it's primarily business when I, when I, uh, I travel anywhere really. And uh, also I think, I think of our listeners and I think they're also the same. They're coming there, maybe either setting up their Hong Kong limited company or bank account, or maybe they're coming in for their yearly audit or, or other, you know, kind of paperwork. So, you know, well, I guess with the, on the list of things to talk about is just some of the places to go or the, the hot spots to, to do for some downtime to chillax and have some fun. And I mean, maybe how much time, I guess there's, there's probably tons of different types of trips somebody could do. Uh, I think I didn't know either when I first came to Hong Kong of all the awesome places to go, but um, maybe maybe give some people just a, a range of, I think there is a lot of possibilities, but I, let's just assume somebody's never been to Hong Kong. What, what are some of the kind of like categories they could do? Uh, some of the main things that are often recommended if they need to tick off all their tourist check boxes is there's Victoria Peak, the Big Buddha Ladies Market, the Temple Street Night Market, and there's a Stanley Promenade, which has a really nice view. But beside these main tourist attractions are listed in every guidebook and every hotel concierge. We do have several other recommendations. Um, first of all, there's 
a lot of bars that have a view. So if you want drinks with a view, there's places like Ozone and Aqua that have really expansive views where you can look out and see the whole Hong Kong skyline. Um, places like Origin, which are known for their gin, uh, and Angel Share, known for their whiskey. Uh, there are also more hidden ones like Mrs. Pound, where you need kind of a secret passcode and move something outside the store to get into the bar. And you have a more urban jungle bar kind of inside of a building called Honey Honey. And for more unique drinks, you have Villa Darts where you can play beer pong, flip cup, uh, shoot pool. And lastly, for um, another perspective on the Hong Kong skyline is Red Bar from Central Side looking over to Kowloon. Then if you're looking for activities to do, some of the more unique things to do are hiking. Hiking is actually really nice in Hong Kong because you have the range of a 30 minute hike up to eight hours and you end up with very, very nice views where you see you know, skyscrapers. Um, they're very nice in Sai Kung and Lama Islands. Uh, you can also go biking in Taipo where you can see the different villages and the countryside and see more local life. There's also karaoke and to check out the new design center called PMQ in Central, where there are a lot of local designers who have their own shops in a previously police married quarters, which is what PMQ is short for. Um, they were old police dorms. It's kind of a fun thing. Wow. And obviously, Keep going. And obviously you can't have, yeah, no, it's really interesting. PMQ. It was a police married quarters. And prior to that, it was a school. Uh, lastly, there's food. You can't forget about food. Uh, there's Tim Ho Wan, which is the number one um, cheapest Michelin star restaurant in the world, which is a dim sum restaurant that has now opened several chains, one of them being in the IFC. There's also another restaurant called Lin Hung Tea House in Central, where if you're brave, <laughs> they have very local feel. You have to grab your own dim sum and get your own tea. A very unique culture to sit and see how people used to have their dim sum many years ago. If you go early enough, you'll actually see um, older gentlemen with brick cages and um, you can see their birds and stuff. Wow. Uh, they carry around yeah. bird cages? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So it was a very cultural thing in Hong Kong where people used to have pet birds and they still do. They have pet birds. You just don't commonly see it so much. And they walk around with a bird cage has a little hook on the bottom so you can hold the bottom of the bird cage and there's songbirds inside and they're very pretty so you sometimes you'll see still people with one or two bird cages out they're kind of walking their birds and we've definitely seen them take their birds out and let them sit in the park wow. <laughs> um, to get some fresh air interesting yeah um, i'm learning too here this is pretty amazing yeah <laughs> Cool. There's also, uh, for other food-wise, there's beef brisket noodles that are really popular in Central at a restaurant called Cow Key on Gough Street. Often there's a line, but the line goes by quickly because you only really have about five or ten minutes to eat. <laughs> it's a very, like, quick eat-and-go kind of place. Yeah. Wow. And <laughs> there's another restaurant called Yat Lock in Central that's known for their roast meats, especially their roast goose. And if you're looking for a more dinnery place, there's a place called Tong Po in North Point. They're really good for groups. They serve Chinese food. And they used to be one of those restaurants that were outside, set outside on the streets. And the government had more regulation. And these restaurants moved indoors. And this place in particular is interesting because they play both really old 50s and 60s Chinese music and very top 40s American clubbing music. <laughs> and the owner, if you're lucky, he comes around and has drinks with you, but he doesn't just have drinks. He uses a chopstick to open the beer bottles and he will down drinks with you out of their glass ceramic bowls. Wow. Yeah. Um, and there's also a really good Peking duck at the American restaurant, ironic as it sounds, in Wan Chai. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool. Well, so those are some of our, yeah, yeah, we'll try right. to link some of these in the in the show notes. There's a ton of stuff and and I think this almost gives reason to your business model because I mm -hmm. I don't even know some of these places. So so I, I I think we picked a few for the show to to talk about for a little bit, maybe give some more uh insights and details of ones that are more like the high profile kind of famous ones. So mm -hmm. like I've I've done this a few times when I have friends or family visiting and and uh the first one i always think of is the big buddha so 
Right, that, right. That's like a full day, right? Like from Central. <laughs> Um, depending on how you get to the Big Buddha, yeah, it could be a definite, like, a half a day activity. Because there's a couple ways you can get there. You can get there through buses. Of course, you can just taxi there, right, if you're, you don't want to be bothered by any of the public transportation. But that's kind of the cowardly route, I would say. And um, you have to change taxis because suddenly you're in new territories. So you're going to have to get out of your Hong Kong Island taxi. Or yeah, Island taxi and you got to switch from red car to green so, car I think right yeah, yeah. but there's also the cable cars called the Longpeng 360 and um, th- so you can ride these cable cars over the mountains to get up to the Buddha and it's a super super gorgeous view from there they also have cable cars or sorry crystal cable cars which is really cool because they're clear on the bottom so yep. when you're riding the car up you can see through to the bottom it's kind of scary but also really fun depending on how thrilling you uh how, how much of a thrill seeker you are so yeah. there's a cable car you could just bus up there which is also cool better than the taxi but not as cool as the cable car okay yeah and then yeah. i've seen I don't know if I was in a crystal box or just, I think I was just in a regular 360. I don't think I could see through the floor. I've done it once or I've done it at least a couple of times now, but uh, I always see people hiking underneath us too on the cable car and I've, it's on my list to do, to hike, hike it. But uh, <laughs> it's been on our list as well. It just takes a while. Yeah. It looks like a long walk because the cable car takes, I think like a half an hour or something from, from one point A to point B. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So Big Buddha's, and then I heard it's not that old. I think right. It's kind of like kind of made, made recently, or it was uh, made in the nineteen nineties. So it's actually a really recent, but it has a record for, in and of itself. World's largest sitting bronze Buddha. So very specific. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's in the world record or what? <laughs> it is. Yeah, oh. yeah. It's a kind of thing, but very specific, obviously. Yeah. Hong Kong tends to have a lot of really random, specific world records, and that happens to be one of them. Cool. <laughs> so I've I've been to the biggest sitting bronze Buddha already. Cool. I can, world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel special. Check that off the yeah. list. Check, check. <laughs> and then uh, I think again. I guess I'm not sure if these are the most popular. These are kind of just ones that I I was thinking of bringing up on the show. It's like. I think you mentioned in your list there at the beginning is Victoria Peak, which is kind of like the classic. When I first came to Hong Kong, I had college friends that lived here and their their father and them took me up to, that was like, I think the first thing they, they took me to see when I came. So maybe give us a little bit of a high level of uh, Victoria Peak. Uh, the Victoria Peak is located in Central, which is the business district. And depending on the time of day you go, your wait could be nothing up to about one hour wait, um, especially around sunset time, because everyone's trying to go up to Victoria Peak to see the sunset. So you get the daytime view, the sunset view and the nighttime view. Um, And this cable car is really interesting. It's at a 45 degree angle and it's the world's steepest funicular. So the world's steepest cable car. Um, which is kind of fun and you get to the top and you get a really nice view of Hong Kong. So it overlooks the Hong Kong skyline and that, you know, up there, there's some shopping you can do. There's malls. There's also further hiking you can do. So you can hike, um, further within Victoria peak, or you can hike down. Um, and there's also a few restaurants up there. So it makes it kind of a activity kind of spot that you can have, or just be up there very briefly to just check out the view and come back down. Yeah. I think it's something you Hopefully, if you're coming for Hong Kong the first time, you should try to make make happen because, you, like you said, you could do it long. You could take a longer trip or a shorter trip. Uh, and uh, I think all the pictures you see of Hong Kong skyline, or most of them, are taken from there. I think on my website, it's taken from the peak. So uh, <laughs> I think everybody gets those skyline pictures because mm-hmm. it looks really amazing. The 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 city skyline at night or even in the daytime, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing to see. Cool. And then there's also the bus. I remember I, I took it in the, the mini bus. I think it goes really fast around these corners that are like cl- <laughs> cliffs that could, you know, like die if you fell off or something. And this is uh, pretty, pretty cool. 
great. These red mini buses are infamous for being kind of like the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. Yeah, and, right. It's like a free um, roller coaster <laughs> ride or something. They go really fast on corners, and it's because that um, the person driving it they're renting out this bus, so if they can make more trips and go more rounds, they'll just make more money. And the other interesting thing about these red minibuses is that they don't actually have a stop. Uh, they go around this general route, but you can just tell them to stop whenever you want to get off. Whereas the green minibuses actually have dedicated stops. So, you know, you know, in front of the 7-Eleven, they're going to stop there. Um, and I've been on some very nauseating um mini bus rides <laughs> they're fun though i think they're also part of the hong kong culture something that you may have to work up to experiencing but it's definitely worth the experience yeah yeah you get used to it i think it's and then i one of my friends uh marcel in hong kong put a hyperlapse on instagram of of a mini bus experience that was pretty scary because for those that don't know yeah. hyperlapse it's like this new <laughs> fast forwarding of a video on on social media so it was like already yeah. going a fast mini bus but in super fast that was a uh, pretty scary to see <laughs> so yeah. so uh, uh next that i have is the beaches i think actually i didn't re- expect there to be a beach when i came and that was another thing like my first I, uh, there's a bunch of them too, so I don't know if we can really cover all of them, but I think even just uncovering the fact that there are even, is even beaches to go to, because I think a lot of people think of it as like this massive like city, you know, like a uh, metropolis, but uh, maybe give us some ideas of the, the beaches. Um, there are quite a few beaches in Hong Kong and, you know, Hong Kong actually is about 65 or 70% like natural land it's it's undeveloped land and so there there's a lot of nature and there's a because it's also an island hong kong island is an island uh, um, there's also a lot of beaches and so there's the kind of mainstream beaches such as um, repulse bay deep water bay and then there's kind of the further out ones in the new territories called california the gold coast and there's also ones that you can hike to uh, such as if you hike Dragon's Back, you can actually go down to Tai Long Wan, which is probably one of the um, top beaches in Hong Kong. It's it's secluded. It the the sand is white. The water's as clear as it could get. Is that Big Wave Bay or is that something else? Because I think I did Dragon's Back, and there was some. Big Wave Bay, Tai Long Wan. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. 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 Same one. Same oh, it one. is. Yeah, there's, that was really nice. A, yeah. My yeah, friend yeah. took me the there. The confusing thing is that there are two Thailand ones. There's one there in Sheko, um, by Sheko, sorry. And then also, if you go out to Sai Kung in um, Kowloon New Territories, there's also a Thailand one there, too. Yeah, so two big wave bays. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely rec- <laughs> uh, That's on my list to go back to. That was... Yeah, like you hike over, you can have this nice hike. It's not so long. I forgot how long. I think like an hour maybe or something. But then like you, an hour and a half. Yeah, and then you get down this like cliff and then there's like a big, I mean, it's not like California waves, like you can't really surf or something, but it's it's decent waves and, and it's a decent yeah. beach. So, so yeah, I think uh, I, had, I never expected that when I came to Hong Kong, so. Yeah, and the really cool thing about Hong Kong beaches is they give you a lot of the stuff you would need when you go to a beach. So they have showers and snacks and they sell volleyballs and beach supplies, beach towel if you didn't bring one, tents if the place has camping, snacks and restaurants. So you kind of only need to bring pretty much your swimsuit. Yeah. They have those too if you forget your swimsuit. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure they can sell you anything too if you want to just buy one or, or, uh, you know, sometimes I've I've used sometimes my extra shorts when I forgot. So, uh, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> so yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah. It's definitely true. There, It's all free too, right? The lockers are free. The bathrooms are free. I don't know if the lockers, but like mm-hmm. the changing room and, yeah, and everything exactly. is all, it's, it's well kept taken care of too. So it's clean and, and everything. So it's really great. Yep. Okay. Next kind of like 
point I liked is the night markets, which there's a few in there, or it can even be the daytime markets too. But I think that's a popular thing to do if you like shopping and and crowded areas and trying to find deals. <laughs> If you like fighting for your stuff and bargaining, <laughs> some <laughs> yeah. people really love bargaining. Yeah, it's true. I, I've had friends that enjoy haggling for like two dollars off of like a five to eight dollar item or something. So that's fifty cents, fifty U.S. cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the principle of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are quite a couple, um, quite a few popular ones. So the really popular ones you hear mentioned really often is Ladies Market in Mongkok, where they sell a lot of. Good souvenirs, so more touristy related things, or fans, T-shirts, umbrellas, knockoff purses, uh, but kind of a sight to see. Yeah, I, I have I, night I, market in Jordan. Okay, go ahead. Um, go usually ahead. starts around six p.m. for the night market. These really random things. There's also um, in Ablu Street in Sham Trai Po. They have an electronic one. Um, so it starts around eleven in the morning, but best if you go in the evening after six. And they sell different kinds of lights, like Christmas lights, home lights, light bulbs, all the different kinds of remote controls. So all <laughs> electronic things. So like circuit boards, um, plugs, earphones, selfie sticks. So they have really unique things also. You can also see people selling um, secondhand houseware, like like a water kettle, because Sham Trai Pa is actually one of the more poor areas of Hong Kong. So you have a lot of people that are trying to sell and buy these goods as well. True, true. Yeah, then these things are, yeah, like you said, it could go into daytime, but night nighttime is more fun. Like, I bought like seven T-shirts for like a hundred Hong Kong dollars or something, which is, which is like fifteen dollars. I was like two dollars a shirt, and everybody everybody laughs at because they're pretty funny too. And they're you know you usually of course you get Chinese or English, you know, different languages, but there's tons of different choices, and they're usually pretty funny. So I got one. It's yeah, like yeah. in big bold letters, no money, no honey. It's uh, <laughs> so, it's one of my more favorite shirts to wear. And uh, yeah, you can get cr- cr- um, crazy stuff. The other thing we joke about with the night markets is that um, you know you've made it if your product is being cloned there. Like they're selling fakes of your things there. Yeah. And that's how you know, like, oh, I've made, I've, I've made it in the world. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's true. It's you know being copied is always, of course, makes someone uh, angry, but it's also somewhat people say it's a compliment because it means your product's worthy enough or good enough or selling enough to be copied. So, so yeah, it's also a, a way to see what what's trending because always have a ton of stuff that you didn't know existed, but like oh, that's actually really popular right now. Um, like they recently had these. Lego things that you build, you know, like uh, cartoon characters, but they're made with really small uh, Lego pieces. And so they look a little bit like the pixel art. You know what I'm talking about? The pixel statues. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so uh, those are really popular uh, for a while. And then like handmade cutout cars were really popular. And then like if you don't go for a couple months, you try to go back and buy these cars. They're like, oh, you know, those aren't trending anymore. So we don't sell them. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. If you see something, you just gotta get it because it yeah it won't be there again. Like even the t-shirts, I wanted I wanted <laughs> to get more of those. No money, no honey, and they're just gone. I don't know what. I, I guess they weren't trending anymore. So so uh, cool. Yeah. So shopping, there's ton, oh everything is you know is great for shopping in in Hong Kong. So so you can spend tons of time going to all these markets and in malls and and all kinds of places. Uh, the next I have is the, well, maybe I call it the star ferry, but basically the boat, there's so many different ways you can take boats and ferries and yachts if you have the budget and there's tons of ways to, cause the water, <laughs> there's water everywhere. So you can go yeah. and have the beautiful skyline of the city. So maybe give us some ideas of the, of the ferries or boating. Yeah. So first is the star ferry that you mentioned. That's, um, it's also really cheap. It's like 25 or 30 U.S. cents to ride one way. So you can ride from Hong Kong Island across to the Kowloon side or vice versa. And it's only about a 10-minute ride, uh, something between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on the waves that day. So average about 10-minute uh, ride. Um, they come quite frequently, probably every 10, 15 minutes. And so that's a nice way to get the skyline in, um, also especially at sunset time. 
other things they have is really common in the summer times. People have junk trips. So you gather a bunch of your friends see if any organization you're a part of uh, rents a boat. So they go out somewhere further, usually maybe in Sai Kung on the northeastern part of uh, the Kowloon side of Hong Kong. And they go out on a boat and sometimes you, you know, bring your own food. And depending on the size of the boat, there can be slides, banana boats, do wakeboarding, um, karaoke rooms. So these are kind of an all day entertainment. People kind of eat and drink and hang out all day and yeah. enjoy kind of the Hong Kong skyline. And so that's kind of a fun alternate summer option. Yeah, that's amazing. I still actually haven't done a jump boat. Mm. And, uh, but yeah, it's also a lot of usually heavy drinking too. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a yeah. lot of fun and, uh, cool. Yeah. The boats are just amazing. I just took up, uh, a friend had a yacht and rented it for like the afternoon and it was amazing. We went to like Lantau Island and yeah, there's just so many, so many places to go. People don't realize. And like this show could, today's show probably go on forever, but I think unless you have any other ones you really want to make sure we talk about. But I, I think this is just a little bit of a taste and I think this is why I'm interested in your, your project. Cause I think people will hear about these things or maybe they've read about it on a, I have a web, I have like a tour guide page on my site too, about like some things to do in Hong Kong and, but it's still hard to really implement cause it's, it is pretty overwhelming Hong Kong. It's like so many people yeah. <laughs> and, and so many different transportation options. So I think, so you guys are offering like local tour guides or local local people to help you go to these places. So maybe give us a little bit of an overview of how that would work. Sure. Um, you would go into our platform and we have a set of locals that you can pick from. There are people that are, some of them grew up in Hong Kong, some have relocated to Hong Kong, but all of them live here. Um, so you pick someone based on whether it's their interests, their careers, um, they have different price points. So you pick someone and then you book them for their time per hour. And they then plan a customized itinerary for you. So they can come back to you. Let's say you picked someone that was interested in nature and food. And so they come back to you who is booking them and ask, you know, how far can you walk? Do you have any kids? Based on that period of time, I can take you on this route and I'll meet you on that day. And for us, the really thing that's important is that they're taking you on a journey to really enjoy the experience. So even more than just getting you to the destination of the place that you want to get to, or where they're trying to bring you, you really get to ask some questions of what it's like to have moved here or to have grown up here. What's the schooling like? Um, and really getting all of those questions in where generally when you're traveling, I feel like there's all these questions I want to ask, but I really can't tap someone on the street and be like, excuse me, what's that thing going on over there? Something that you just generally can't do. Um, so generally we provide that connection to these other people that can show you around. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And then... The prices is based by hour, and then I guess you'd contact them, and they'll they'll give you an idea of how many hours for like say go to maybe the I'm gonna say it wrong Dragons Back if you want to hike Dragons, Dragons, Dragons Back to like Big Way Beach and say hey I listen to the podcast and I I want to go there when I'm there so they would ask somebody on the site and they would give them a price for for like getting there and back for their time. Yeah, you can already see. Yeah, you can already see each person's price on the site. It's already listed um, for each hour. And you can either decide, like, in between business meetings, I only have three hours on this day. So can you fit something in that's, you know, food and nature related, for example? Or you could say, there's a specific place I want to go. I want to go to these places. How much time do I need? You can also, you know, ask questions on the site or shoot us an email also. So you can work it both ways. Cool. And yeah, I mean, I'm, your website is online. You know, honest, so honestly, I'm... You stood out to me in Founder Institute because I think you're a little bit further along than I think most most of the teams are in the program. So maybe give us a, give us your status of where you you are in your business now. What's some of your goals, both like in the program and just generally? Um, one of our goals that we wanted to get from the program is kind of get more input from people from different walks of life and learn about their experiences in growing a business and also hearing about their different travel experiences just because you get the diversity of people from different places and backgrounds. Um, and for us now, we're working on growing our user acquisition and starting to learn more about fundraising and how that process works. And we have been able to get a lot of tips from the mentors in sorting out various business questions and issues that we have right now. So working on growing that base further. Okay, great. And um, I'm sure you've gotten this question before, but the name 
Sam the Local. Where did that? Where? What's the story behind the name? <laughs> you know, it's so funny that. People are so interested in this and we've gotten the most random guests. I think one of the most random ones we got where it was like, so is Sam both of your ex-boyfriends? And we're like, <laughs> no, why would we name our company after an ex-boyfriend? That's the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. But the, the way Sam came about is that we wanted to personify this concept because um, there's just something more to traveling than, you know, the tour books and the tour guides. There's, there's a very human aspect to it. And so we wanted to personify the concept. We specifically kind of picked Sam because the name is very easy to say in most accents. And you also have a generally a friend named Sam. It's general enough where, you know, most people have that you know, my friend Sam, blah, blah, blah. And then it's also gender neutral. And so it could be, you know, a Samantha or it could be from Samuel. So it doesn't necessarily play into one side or the other. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I, I like that. That does, I can kind of, I can see that now. So I guess obviously you don't have Hong Kong in your name. So you're, you're, are you looking to go outside of Hong Kong or? Yeah, we are. Our expansion plans are mostly uh, in Asia at the moment. Because a lot of our competitors are very well established in the U.S. and the European market, but there aren't quite as many big name brands in Asia. So where we want to go first are cities that are a little bit more hard to get around with languages. So those would be Seoul and Tokyo and Taipei. And then after that, we'll uh, hit a variety of the other Southeast Asia cities. Okay, cool. Great. I'm excited to see that. I can, we can try that out. Some of the listeners too. And when that comes, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're really go ahead. excited about um, all the progress that we've been making and you know, where this is heading. So it's one of those, like every day you wake up super excited to see what's coming up today. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm sure there's some stories. Do you have maybe a, don't want to surprise you or anything. Do you have any, any fun stories with like uses of, this, of the site or? Recently, one of the most interesting things for us is that we were contacted by an events company um, for planning one of their events for one of their corporate clients. They saw that our site generally does a B2C where you just book one person, but they were wondering if could do something for them on a larger scale. Um, they were planning it for a luxury holding company um, that has a lot of brands under them. And they were having about 20, 30 people come into Hong Kong in June and ask them if we can plan an itinerary for them for two days and if some of our locals can come along. And so that's something that we've been working on. And it's really exciting for us, for people to see that there's different ways that this, this could be played out. And we really could provide that human touch to people and get more beyond just a travel agent or a regular tour guide that shows you the regular places, but here's about the stories behind places and the different unique experience you can have just from a regular person living in a city with the things they know. Awesome. Um, the other cool thing about this uh, client of theirs is that their whole company is really into sustainability. And so we were able to tailor a large part of the uh, two-day outing to um, encompass a lot of sustainable things. And so that was really cool for them too. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm excited for you. I think there's a lot, of, there's a lot of ways you can go with the business and it's true. Like there's these trade shows, you know, there's like, they could also maybe somehow tie in with your service. Cause I think a lot of times uh, it kind of goes into my next question is, you know, like a lot of, a lot of listeners and business travelers come in Hong Kong for like, you know, we, we had global sources on the show, Peter Zaff, and they come in for these trade shows, but they also want to kind of have some fun at night or on downtime between the, the shows. What would you, uh, what's your favorite thing or what would you maybe, if they can only do one thing for fun, uh, what would you uh, recommend them? Oh, that's a tough one. Just one thing? Maybe two or maybe each get one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, personally for me, I would suggest for them to go to Shangwan. I think it's a really unique district. It's one district over from Central, so it's not too far. It's just one MTR stop. Um, and in that area, there's a lot of boutiques and coffee shops, but it's also a district that's transitioning from a lot of more local Hong Kong things to a lot of boutiques coming in. So you see a lot of where you have a street. There's a particular street called Taiping Shan Street where you have a really local noodle shop. But down the street would be an art gallery. 
and another shop will sell um, vintage furniture. And so you have a lot of contrast. And I think that district in itself, there's a lot you can see. And so that would be my recommendation of things for them to do. Um, for me, I'm going to pick a tourist location, but I think it's one of the must do's in Hong Kong and that's to go to the Avenue of the Stars. And there's something very enchanting about sitting at the Avenue of the Stars and staring across the harbor to the Hong Kong skyline. It's one of those moments where it's like, wow, this place is amazing. Yeah, that's true. It's also a a good date place, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh we didn't bring that up on the show, but that's a good one. It's it's actually right off the Star Ferry, right? When you get yep, off the Star yeah. Ferry, so you can go there. Cool, that's a good one. There's um there's a light show every night at eight. And um, you know, it's not like the Disneyland fireworks or anything, but it's, it's still a really cool show to see. They introduce the buildings on the skyline and there's a music that goes to it. Yeah, I've seen some like Pac-Man or something. They, they do some creative stuff with the buildings now and the LEDs technology. It's, it's amazing. So, so thank you for taking the time to come on the show and I uh, really appreciate it. So it, I'm hoping some people will take up your, your awesome website when they're in town. Can you share with people how they can reach out to you and, and your business? Yep. Um, our website is samthelocal.com and you can email us at explore at samthelocal.com or you can also find us on um, social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Cool, cool. Yeah, we'll link that up on the show notes too. So, so thanks again for coming on. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming on the show, Anita and Maggie. I'm really excited about the Sam the Local startup, and I'll be telling friends and visitors coming into Hong Kong to give it a shot. Also, everybody, don't forget that the show notes with a lot of the things that they re- they mentioned are on globalfromasia.com slash episode 87. And also, I was mentioning that it's a good resource to cite. It's a good resource maybe for locals in Hong Kong that are super busy and maybe a friend from out of town comes to visit and they want to show them Hong Kong, but maybe they don't have the time or maybe they're even not traveling out of town. So maybe they can use the site to, uh, you know, buy, you know, don't tell their friends to buy it, but they could buy it for their friends so that they don't feel guilty that they can't hang out with them enough. Maybe it's another angle that I think that uh, the business could look into. Again, I, I don't have any financial benefit if you use their site or not. I just think it's a cool product. So uh, I'm not an affiliate or or anything. So I'm just, just trying to help out. And I'm glad they came on the show and added a lot of value. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed that. And I appreciate everyone for listening. Keep it up. Keep listening, keep sharing, and call always uh, questions, comments. Best if you interact with me on our blog at globalfromasia.com slash episode 87. And next week, we're going to have some sci-fi talk, talking about floating islands and countries. It's a new concept to me. I'm not going to get into it so much right now. It's I'm still kind of like soaking it in, but we had uh, ideas about new governments that are forming out in the sea, open sea. So we'll catch you at episode number 88. It's a lucky number in China, too, so I'm excited to get to that milestone. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your week and take care. To get more info about running an international business via Hong Kong, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.